All right, welcome everyone. Um, this is Jared Napolitano, aka JNAP. I'm here tonight with Robbie Hendon. How you doing, Robbie? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Um, we are going to be covering the 2022 Champions League semifinal match. I'll call it match one between the one seed Chris Kelly and the two seed, or not the two seed, the four seed Joe Olson, aka a Rebel Spy. This is going to be a one-game match. We can say. Um, the table has been posted. Um, Chris, as the one seed, got to pick the side, and I think as all players in the top eight have been kind of adhering to a little bit of a gentleman's policy of giving their opponent a heads up of what side they're going to be playing, so it's not like <laughs> at the minute the game fires, you got to figure out, oh, am I playing light or dark? Uh, deck lists right. are required for these games, but given that it's a one-game playoff, um, you know, there's no concern that the deck is going to change from game one to game two, and this has fired. Um, so Chris is posted dark, and Robbie, you are a teammate of Chris, so looking forward to some insight <laughs> you may have here. So our insight was, if he doesn't play QMC, this could be a fun match. If he plays QMC, it might be a short match. So, <laughs> Well, that's not good for and, Chris then, it sounds like. Yeah. He, he had been mentioning it to me, so he hasn't told me what's... He's entirely playing, so mm -hmm. um, I don't think typically ISB versus QMC is that bad of a matchup. Yeah, my understanding is that QMC has some benefits here, similar against ROPS, and that they don't have to worry about the drains getting reduced because wherever they have an alien at any right. best spin location, they're protected from the minus. And, of course, in the other semifinal match also going on right now, um, there's a QMC that MHT is playing versus uh, my teammate Connor, who's playing um, ROPS. So <laughs> if you're on the multi-twitch, yeah. um, this would be fun. You can maybe toggle back and forth between which audio you're getting. Um, but Dan and Garrett are covering the other one. Yeah, and when MHT fired and showed QMC, we were kind of wondering if that would be what Joe would fire. Um, but, you know, decklist was already sent, so... Can't do much to change it. Yeah, so they lock in. Um, and now I know Joe and Team 5, I think Kyle, I've played him a couple times with this. They seem to like this QMC. I think Eric's always been a little partial to QMC to some extent. Um, yeah. And like I told Chris when we were talking about it, um, you know, Joe's a good enough player that he can kind of play anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, you know, for a couple years he tended to play main decks. Um, but I mean, his range is pretty large that yeah. he can play most of the top light side decks at any yeah. time. So it's hard to really put him on a deck. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and, and I was just Chris gonna... was worried that he would get put on Thrawn. So mm. that's why he made the choice he did. Yeah. Yeah. So let's set level set real quick here. Just so uh, Joe did the cyborg or computer interface, yep. the... So he's got the extra sight to start and only two starting effects and so no walkling, but he starts with the upper plaza out there. Chris is doing slip sliding with the Cloud City site, which is uh, potentially interesting. And he's got Shizor's Palace here with the new updated image. So he can pull sights that way to get his activation going. He's got IAO, presumably to get out some docking bays. Um, I don't know what, sorry, we were kind of setting the stage here, what system he might have pulled. Kur Kurita. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, if Chris is playing like a big blue with Star Destroyers with low hyperspeed, that could, you know, probably be a drawback against uh, QMC, which will probably play wild card, which has a higher uh, hyperspeed of five. Um, so it'd be interesting what happens in space, you know, if and when Chris puts out that battleground. Um, right. But yeah, lots of interesting stuff. And, and one more thing I just wanted to add. Um, yeah, Joe has played QMC now. I think he played it in the Outrider Cup tiebreaker match against Bastion. I, he played it in the Jawa Brawl final against Brad. Um, I think he played it against Worf's last round, too. So. Yeah, he likes QMC in these, at least in these, seemingly in these online um, high-level right. events, so it's interesting. Yeah, and you know, when it, as somebody that's played QMC, one of the ways to attack it is to go at Bespin hard. Yeah. And take, take ownership of Bespin, and yeah. so it'll be interesting to see, because you know, ISB typically has some sort of Star Destroyers, mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be interesting to see how quickly, you know, Joe mm -hmm. kind of fortifies space yeah. if he does. Yeah, um, and a few things interesting here that he, uh, Chris just put out Karita, no qualms. Um, 
And Straight Drew. Joe, yeah, Drew, he didn't pull any course on sites. Maybe he knew he activated some. He drew up to a 16-card hand, which... Yeah, he pulled the docking <laughs> base, so he, he yeah. saw what he activated. Might leave him susceptible to this new shield, right? That's effectively like a Monarch type thing, um, yeah. which is interesting. Maybe he had to dig for something or felt he needed to dig for something, as Joe puts out the docking bay from hand, the north corridor from hand. But yeah, it's... Uh, and this is exactly what happened in the other game with Connor and Matt, where I was kind of wondering... You know, is it to Rob's detriment to put out their battleground system, or do you just like you were alluding to, Robbie? Like, do you just go full bore for the Bestman system? Because if Dark wins that, they very, very, very likely win the game if they prevent Light from sustaining or satisfying battle order. Right. I mean, it's not even just battle order either. I mean, that's a big part of it. It's but a celebration, it's yeah. celebration, and it, yeah. you know, while they control Bestman, they get a benefit of I think theirs is reducing the cost right no they yeah. make their opponents deploy more yeah so hang on one second yeah hopefully everyone let's do this um hopefully everyone can see the screen still this feels like i dare you. yeah interesting uh, carl is that carl made the comment yeah the new shield so yeah. as we see here the west gallery comes out from joe as well so he's got three sites out on his turn one both players set to activate 14 um but yeah, ISB, of course, as, as everyone knows, it could take a couple different forms of, is it troopers? Is it, you know, big blue um, with a lot of, like, numpty pilots? Um, it could be a bunch Walkers, of things. Walkers, even. Yeah, yeah, of course, um, with an exterior Cloud City site. Um, but out comes Overseer, and of course, we have this fun uh, effect where once per turn of a battle disinitiated investment system with Executor there, I mean, cancel that battle. But if we haven't seen, like, a Merzik or a Kuat Drive Yard, so it doesn't seem like... And you probably know, you may know, but like, it doesn't seem like this is going to be the, um, you know, they must never again leave the city with the free executor, as Joe does the turn one flip with still yep. three force to spare. Yeah, I would suspect we see Hark land here, too. I, mean, with, I don't know. With Chris, getting, with Chris getting 14, that is a lot, unless he just, unless he thinks he's playing the executor in there, I mean, or he can find a barrier or something. Yeah, no, I mean, he's got zero concern about Executor on this turn, because, right, he can cancel the battle. Right. Um, Joe may... Let's see, this is a... Uh, he doesn't play the the Goldenrod Shield, which he might not even need to. Um, but, yeah, that's an interesting point. Does he do the, the land move, hide move? Um, I'm which never a fan of the that. typical... I don't like that first move. Turn <laughs> I don't like that, because then how do you re then it's a little more difficult to reestablish a Bespin, because you're going to then... Eventually, you're probably going to move back in front of them, but you might need a turn or two to kind of gather some more space pieces to make sure that you don't just get Right, clocked. and that's that's what that move tends to let you do, is it lets you go hide and then mm -hmm. do it. Um, that's what he's going to do. Yeah, he's okay. going to do. Right. It's, it's Better the player safe than me. play. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. If you expect ISB Big Blue, I mean, Chris could play... I mean, he drew 16 cards, he got 14 force. Yeah. A lot of damage attack could really hurt. And he knows and that Joe can't play alternatives to fighting with only two left. Correct. Um, and Joe's only got four cards, and he looked at three. So he had three cards and looked at three. Yeah. You know, not a high chance he found a ton of defensive cards there. So, yeah. Q at least for space. QMC is like a few other light side decks where it's like... It's kind of like, this is what CCT is like for Dark, where, like, that turn two, if you could just, like, sustain through it, and, and, and by, like, turn five, if you could really just, like, get stood up, is the phrase I use about QMC, like, it's really hard to penetrate it then. If you, when, once they start getting battle orders satisfied, they get celebration going, they can go wide, they, they have the ability to find their evasion with... Ooh, this a is new big. shield. Yeah, new shield at the end of his turn. So he can use the two, right? And remove all but... If Monica Nine drops, cards. see, uh, at the end of a turn, so Joe's going to use this presumably, but now Chris plays the counter, right? So thrown back, just targeted your hand, may reveal two cards from hand. They may not be removed or checked. So, oh God, this is going to be some weird rules. So <laughs> once he removes them, or they can't be checked for duplicates, but Joe's still going to take cards out of Chris's hand here, right? Okay, so he triggers, thrown back. I haven't really seen this in action yet. All right, shuffle, all but nine. So Chris can protect two cards yeah. and then shuffle all but seven, and those two cards is yeah. what will end up happening. Maybe one of the ones he was digging for in the first turn? Cause... That's what I would assume he, was, he would protect. 
But then again, maybe that's a false assumption. Maybe he wasn't necessarily digging for stuff. Maybe he was just like, hey, I want to stock my hand up early. And, and yeah, but I mean, he's he's got to know the new shields there, so he, he might just stop at 14 if he wasn't digging. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we haven't seen the cards move yet. Chris is still showing 16. I wonder how exactly this happens in Jemp, where... Oh, he, wait, no, we get what to happens? see the cards. What happens? <laughs> if Grimtosh or that may, may reveal two cards... What the frick? Is that normal? <laughs> they get stacked there? I have no idea. <laughs> what is going on? Oh boy. I mean, I'm sure this has been vetted, but I didn't realize they get stacked there. I think they're just. I think. Gim just oh, okay. Them interesting. There to, okay. If Adam would to, probably explain this, I don't know if he's in the chat or not, but okay, that's interesting. They kind of like you store them there. I, Very yeah, interesting. Yeah, just store them out of the hand because then it could get. It might oh, yeah. be weird to do programming to say, yeah. "Hey, these two cards are protected." It's probably easier to do something like that. That's interesting, especially since the cards get revealed anyway. Right. Right. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's how it works. Yeah. And right. we saw Chris protected Mara Jade and Tarkin. Mm -hmm. So it actually mm. was probably a pretty good move by Joe to land Hark. Yeah. Instead of trying to fight that. Yeah. Especially if he was if he was going to plan to do the thrown back, you know, that means that he was showing that he doesn't have a barrier or doesn't have the, or doesn't have the force for a barrier at least. Right. Um, yeah, so interesting. And typically you just want to flip QMC so that way you get your second turn. Mm -hmm. you know tunnel vision into this large force pile and you can start setting up for turn three four and five yeah and then that's when you start pulling ahead all right so joe goes or not joe chris goes with the marriage age ship turns mobilization points combo back on presumably a couple isp agents maybe even tarkin and two more might be joining here to but it wouldn't surprise me if joe's got like a sand or right, there's tritum who triggers a uh draw from reserve decker use pile he reminds me of, um, you know, when Chris wrote that really good 20 for 20 article about, you know, reflecting on the PC's growth, and I'm pretty sure it was Ryan Jellison, who's a noted ISP enthusiast, his uh, his favorite V cards were, I think he said, basically the, I guess it would be Tarkin V, Yularen V, Tritum V, and maybe Callus. Those are the four, like, ISP agents that came out, like, sets three and four, maybe. And uh, we'll probably see a bunch of them this game, if not all of them. Probably all of them. So here comes Tarkin. He allows him to... He should have drawn cards with Tarkin, but he played them early, so... Yeah, it possibly doesn't have enough to get under that six either way, but maybe right. that might be a point. All right, so Tarl. So we see a trooper ISB agent, right? Yeah, Rebel Blockade Runner. 2-5 with Imperial Arrest Order. Just fodder. But yeah, Tarkin's but he allows Tarkin to do his... Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's going to be hard for Joe to go back up into without having mm -hmm. Wildcardi or Home One yeah. or something else for space. Yeah, so or that's a good point. Usually Joker the King. two options. Yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> I think that he's like the best space weapon for QMC is Yoda, Keeper of the Peace, just a cap. Um, right. But I've seen a move away from him because people more people are using sand. But QMC, you know, they could have Hanchui Falcon V. They could have Overseer. Oh, yeah. They could have wild card, which is good in that you can add to total battle destiny so you can get around um, sand right. effect. So QMC can get like sneak and like, sometimes well, overseer adds to power. Right, right. But yeah, you can do all these things to add to power yeah. and add to total battle destiny, which get around right. the sand cap. So you can right. really pack a punch with just one battle destiny with QMC. Is is my point? Right, right. Which is why I typically liked Yoda in there, just because he always worked versus the right. effect that only worked twice. Yeah, I feel like when I play, I play QMC a lot, and like, no, I shouldn't say a lot, a good amount in 2020, and I feel like I always was thinking, man, I want Yoda in my opening hand, because <laughs> him yeah. just, he just equalizes it so much for QMC. Well, I don't typically want him in my opening hand, I'd rather have the uh, tools to do the first turn flip, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah, the cheap aliens, it, yeah. Yoxkit, Cal, Lobot, yeah. although Some I don't think Lobot probably makes the cut nowadays, there's just so many, there's a lot of good light side aliens. Which I'll also credit to Ryan Jellison because I know he's been a big champion of uh, like agents in the court and um, getting some of those uh, those le you know more less mainsy characters into uh, into circulation like Ketwall V. I'm pretty sure it was a Jellison card who is definitely showing up in QMC builds now. Yeah, well, and yeah, you know, especially in the watering hole mm -hmm. versions of these decks, which from looking at you know Joe's few cards he's played so far i would expect it's a watering hole version yeah 
Yeah, no, I've definitely seen him play the watering hole. I've seen him play, like, lots and lots of cheap aliens and probably more evasion. Um, I wonder if he's got, like, Momal. I know that new allies like Momal Nadon for a little while. I feel yeah. like I'd always see him at the blockade bridge. <laughs> I see this <laughs> spy alien threatening a drain of one at a non-battleground, and um, you know, just when QMC goes really wide late game. Right. Oh. Well, and you know, there's so many good aliens that QMC can play to mm. that are relatively cheap. Yeah. Um, I still prefer the Pukamir version, but I like to have yeah. a QMC deck that has a counter beat plan. Okay. okay we have a wall cardy. All right, so we see Joe go wild card the updated image V or wild card um, to Karita, which has this is Cyberspeed five, so it can go back and forth best when if need be. Maz comes out, Maz does the reveal. Maz is going to trigger me to remind everyone about the Twitch subscription program because she is the thirty month milestone, um, and everyone should subscribe. We thanks to everyone who subscribed the last couple of years. There's been a great great turnout, and that really helps the PC do a lot of things, including different equipment, different. Zoom capabilities, all different fun stuff for the stream team, um, and other things too, but mostly centered around the stream team. So thanks to everyone who subscribes, and if you need more info on subscribing, I will paste the link to that in a moment in the chat, um, so you have it all right there. But yeah, it's a it's a good good program, and it's a I call it a win win win, where it helps the PC, helps the individual, and uh, and, and well, helps. and it's, it's usually <laughs> free from. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, it's usually free for most people, too. I mean, most people have Amazon Prime at this right. point. Mm -hmm. And when you got Amazon Prime, you get one free subscription a month. So you might as well go ahead and log in, use it, and donate to the PC with it. Yeah. Although, reminder, if you do that, you have to do it every month. Yeah, and you know what? Someone mentioned that they forgot recently. And one of the cool things, um, I just saw my Twitch app. I got like a message, like a notification that said, "Hey, renew now. Your subscription's up." So I, I don't know. The, the Twitch app's pretty cool. Um, that was a way. Of, I mean, I have like a calendar invite on my Google, but the tricky thing is, I think I set it for like every thirty days, and then because every month's not the same, it kind of bounces around a little bit. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely highly recommend it. I found the link. I'll paste it in the chat as you see. Hark is going to the upper walkway. Yeah, it um, turns into a drain of two because it cancels the upper walkway text. Um, Turns into a drain of eat, two. Eat. Oh, because opponent can't reduce? Well... Yeah, yeah I think Joe was it, just asking that in the chat. It The upper walkway specifically says if you control... Oh. No, the four shade minus one, though, but because... Yeah, it's on the light side side, yeah. This is like but the... But it should... Yeah. It should stop it from the objective. Yeah, because it says at each... Best one location you control with the alien. Your force has been modified or canceled. So because it is a dark side card, this is your opponent, quote unquote, modifying your drain. So that's where this stays, as we see here, force drain light for two. So that minus one doesn't apply. And that's that's one of the I think it was in Gurgle's uh, one of his quizzes for sure, which are really cool. I like when he does that after majors. Um, like I think the most classic example of this is like Menace Fades about opponents force drain bonuses. So like. If light side is at the Hoth Mountains, which says four strain plus one, like that still works for light side even if like Imperial Decree is on, because it's not quote unquote the opponent's. It's not the light side's modifier in a way. It's like dark side because it's on a dark side card. It's it's an right. interesting rule that I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> don't get at first pass. Right. Well, I mean that's that's part of the hey this game was designed in the '90s before yeah. standardized text and concepts were a yeah. thought. So dude. It is amazing that this GEMP exists. It really is, because... Oh, yeah. Like, this game is so freaking complex. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I don't know how many people actually remember when Tabesti was setting it up, but mm -hmm. I remember when he came on and posted, and I the first thing I thought was, oh, dude, good luck if you're doing it by yourself. It's going to take you, yeah. you know, five to ten years. I mean, it took him, I think, two or three, so... He, he's a saint. But, yeah, I... He, I think he started it technically at the very early part of 2013, and it took like four solid years because I think it really hit its stride in like early 2017. That's yeah, when a lot I, more I cards got coded, and he just started, I think, consolidating a lot of his coding, and then right. he just started rolling forward a lot of that uh, coding of certain cards of, okay, this other card works similarly, boom, and he just started knocking them out. Right. All right, so now we're finally seeing some cards go to the Lost Pile here. So Joe tosses Yoxkit V and Hanchui Falcon V from... 
Well, the, the Han Chewie Falcon from Reserve, Yoxkit from Hand, second copy of Yoxkit. Um, Joe has Battle Plan satisfied. He's threatening a drain of two and one. And now it looks like Chris is going to start invading uh, Bespin sites. And that's a good site to go to, the North Corridor. Correct. And it's also Yogurt V, not Yoxit V. Baseballs. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yogurt, yeah. Um, so, the the thing is, though, he even though Chris controls this, he can't cancel this drain over here at the upper right. walkway because there's an alien there. Right. Um, but now, oh, Swarm Trooper Garrison. Haven't seen many of them lately. Oh, so this looks like a trooper build. All right, so yeah. we've seen Tarl, we've seen a Garrison, we've seen a Patrol. You know, arguably one of the strongest non-uniques in the game. God, these, these remastered cards, big shout-out to Christian... And everyone involved in this process, like the proofers, um, these cards are just so crisp and they look great, all these uh, remastered cards. So set four. Um, and then some like the Decipher ones that have errata, you'll notice that those look a little crisper. I'm trying to think if there's any examples on the table, but it's really cool. I think it goes a long way on Jump and V-Kit and Scomp, all those different things. When the, when the images are really high res and look great, it, it really pops. Like this one is not, yeah. and you can tell it's a little fuzzier. And, you know, I'd like to point out that with the Imperial Arrest Order, Joe doesn't have to worry about any Ellis shenanigans. Right. So right. Chris can't set up, like, a trooper beat down and then right. Ellis into it right now. Yeah. So Chris is going to draw here. So just as a, a reset, Chris has got about 36 cards down, 6 in hand, so that's 38. Joe's got 31 down, 43. So Joe has more hand in life. I would... They're both threatening... Well, now Joe's... Or Chris Joe's is threatening drain of what is this four? Yeah, but yeah. presumably Joe's gonna get ultimatum turned on here. Well, it's a, it would still be a drain of four with ultimatum. It's two and two, but it's more at that one location. Right. It's so a two and two, and it seems like this is trending towards. Joe not being able to set up celebration, but that that can change for sure. But if yeah. if QMC doesn't get celebration stood up, I mean he'll probably have the figure in Dan and the modal nodes to get some retrieval. Um, but you know he, I guess the line here is he probably wants obviously he wants to turn on ancient watering hole at some point, and 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 get those trains through on Cloud City so they're immune with the objective from Dark's reduction from ISB's objective. Um, and we have a cold feet, so that's not Chris's fourth shield pull. He's going to have one more. Joe obviously has at least one more. I don't think he played the first one with Hear Me Baby or, uh, or Perimeter Scan. No, he has one more. He he played the battle order and then pulled it back. But now, for battle plan. <laughs> so insert the obligatory joke about Joe and Aim High. Like, Aim right. High is not out right now, and that's a card you almost I always want to get he against He reverted back after he played the battle plan, and I bet that's why is because he doesn't want Chris retrieving troopers all game for free. Because that wait, will make a difference. But wait a minute, Robbie. So is he going to... He's got to pick between aim high... Wait, so battle plan's not out on either side. Because both right. sides are probably going to satisfy. So now neither player is going to pull it. But now aim right. high or ultimatum? So either oh, Joe yeah. pulls aim high and has a menace fades floating, maybe? Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to take a large drink. <laughs> yeah, Chris is getting free retrieval. Because I, I don't think QMC often plays the shield puller. Uh, not usually. Uh, I, I don't think the watering hole version does. Mine played it because I was doing the counter beats, so the Hear Me Baby canceled some of the annoying effects. And, of course, Court was big at the time when I was playing it. So. Yeah. Hear Me Baby makes a little more sense for mains, for light mains, right? Because protects I have you now, right? Um and protects the ceasefire, which is kind of a pain as court for light side mains. And then obviously hidden weapons when light side mains is more likely to have like two or three characters as a site. Whereas right. Well, QMC, I was playing a bunch of EPPs in my yeah. QMC with some Destiny Adders. So yeah. as like so like as a counter beat surprise kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so hidden weapons or ceasefire was quite annoying. Yeah, but. I've seen a few variations. I think like MHT and, and Eric Hunter and I, I mean, Stubbley's played a couple of those too over time. Some, like, QMC that, like, pack a punch. I mean, MHD had some iterations of QMC that had, like, tons of Rebels. I was always amazed, like, uh, you know, not, just, you know, not like, well, 28 that's... characters mostly being alien-type setups. Right. But, yeah. That was something I, I picked up from Tom Hay 
back when he was playing QMC all the time. There's Yoda. All right, there's, the there's Yoda. our guy. So maybe maybe Joe is going to move back to Bespin here and try to set up celebration. Yeah. Because Yoda well, will go a long way. celebration this turn. He has to wait another turn to deploy it, so. Right, unless he's got another ship, but probably not this turn. He no, put a ship there and then move. With, well, I would also assume with Han Chewie and the Falcon in the yard. Oh, and yeah. He might have one more of those, but he's probably not doing the home one package, so. Yeah, or like an Unita. Do we, I feel like I saw Unita at some point, but maybe. I know I fooled up my Unita on Jump earlier today. <laughs> Unita V. <laughs> Um, so Toss Ka, good old OG from Special Edition. Yeah. I like it gives me a plug for the uh, the online retro event this year. It'll be premiered a special edition. It's gonna take place like April, May, maybe June with like a uh, match play stage might bleed into June. Well don't tread on me. Um, so yeah, that that'll come out. More details come out on that. Andy Talaga is leading the charge on that and already seen some talk. I know my buddy uh, Matt Wadden excited to play some operatives, even though somewhat neutered. There's Ancient Watering Hole. Yep. Um, another, so the non-V version of Don't Tread On Me, of course, was a starting interrupt back in Special Edition, which allowed you to deploy Ultimatum, Do or Do Not, and Scramble Transmission, which is not coded currently in GEMP. And I'm not going to talk out of turn, but I'm going to say I'm hopeful <laughs> that Scramble Transmission is going to be coded pretty soon. Yeah, I think it would play a pretty good role in that format. But Yeah, makes Grim Tosh a main sense. A, That's always fun, right? Yeah, that, that was a time when I wasn't playing, so I don't know too much about the... <laughs> oh. well, I remember that time fond, fondly. Got all the first iterations of Hunt Town. Um, but yeah, I, don't try on me. I'll, I would run that in like no idea a couple of times, because I feel like there were a lot of games I wanted to get sand... And then some, a lot of other games, I'd want to get Menace Fades out for no idea. So kind right. of having the flex to it. I know New Allies, at least at some point, like Drew was like, let's play two sand. Um, but I, I kind of, I thought Menace Fades for a while was pretty cool. I, I know recently I, I saw a Greg Shaw build of no idea that had no Menace Fades, which was really surprising. But, you know, at the same, oh, man. Oh, gee. Drew, Drew went very deep here. <laughs> oh, man. That's oh, man, an interesting it... play. Yeah, speaking of Greg uh, Shaw, speaking of Greg Shaw and Harkonas, <laughs> Greg, Greg's having flashbacks if and when he watches this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that's that's risky to do in this day and age. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of ways to cancel, re like lots of ways to cancel reacts nowadays. But uh, well, you know, it's I still remember when you know the old shields were in there. Uh, I don't remember what the dark side one was. Uh, the white light side was weapons, weapons display and firepower. V, yeah. Yeah, firepower, and everybody was complaining when I was talking about trying to That's like funny. Arconas aren't that big of a deal anymore, guys. <laughs> oh, it's gonna take over the format. It's the first one I've seen in so long. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of skies falling when those got banned, but. I think it definitely, those getting banned definitely helped QMC. I think that's a pretty safe statement, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and that, I mean, they were silly shields, and the, they were created because, I mean, they were technically part of, I don't know, I think it was like V set 5 or something. Way, I mean, they were early parts of the PC design way, way back in like 04, maybe 05. Yeah. And, yeah, at the time, Arconas and Reacting Away were running around, and you know it was a lot of dodges and things. So, yeah. I am a hundred percent, hundred percent positive Joe has a plan B for this Arcona, whether it's a path oh, or it's, and it's a yeah. trap or Hujix. Yeah, blast the door, kid. You name it. Yeah, probably Hujix. Like would be the safest. Probably Hujix. Anybody? QMC. I feel like used to play Hujix combo a little bit more, but maybe it can go either way. I think. Um, all right, so Joe's gonna move in front of Bespin, so that'll be fun. We'll get a battle. Yeah, if you're if you're playing the Yoda Keeper of the Beast to space, you're probably not doing the combo Hujix. Yeah. As much, but right, so he's moving Hark up. He uh, yep. he's gonna get the Power Destiny. Let's count the species. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. No, five. Maz does not have a species. Yeah. Um, so Joe's exactly five. So Watering Hole, it's I would active. lightly suggest. I wonder if the, this should have like a on off <laughs> modifier like is yeah. Water? <laughs> that'd be good for I was, jump i was watching a game last night and i was like i don't want to count this can y'all just put something on here to tell me if it's good or not yeah. turn the card upside down something let me know yeah 
All right. Show. Right. So, but I think you put in uh, blast the door or blast the door controls. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna mention that. Um, you know, how often does ISP run blast door controls? I guess a a trooper beats definitely makes sense, whereas a lot of ISPs might be more. Oh, Tarkin's bounty. <laughs> All right, accelerate into Tarkin's bounty. Well, that'll help him find something. Yeah, now he's gonna activate another. We'll activate fifteen. Another fourteen, I think. He, I know another twelve. Okay. Oh. You yeah, did it, I see. Yeah. yeah, that's right, he didn't save any force. Right. He hasn't saved force yet this game. So Chris has more cards face down, Joe's got a couple more cards in hand. All of Chris's drains are now covered up. Chris just played theirs, no try, he just got Yoda out. Maybe he saw yeah. a sense, or maybe he's just playing it safe. Probably playing it safe. QMC can pack sense. Yeah, Tom, Tom Hayde would play sense in it, I feel it. Yeah. Alright, we got Tarkin's bounties coming out, Joe, or Chris yeah. is going to have 12 cards to pick from here. I would play it since, but. I've seen alter in QMCs because a lot of its tricks might be susceptible to sense. So then if you have an alter to back up your trick, that that's good. I've also started to see well, that in Zero Hour, where Zero Hour has a lot of Friendly Fire tricks. is a really good card anyway, in my yeah. opinion. It's got the dual modes to yeah. give you some options too, which the second mode of alter here would go against Trooper Beats pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this this is probably a, I would say this is kind of a pivotal turn here of, yeah, you know Joe just kind of pulled ahead on board state, but obviously still long way to go and lots of cards in hand, but yeah we're getting to that zone of like is QMC like stood up because once it kind of builds up a, a wall, <laughs> it can be really right. hard to, to penetrate and then it can also get really ugly. I mean this is this is a again a, a one game match so diff doesn't matter. It's just they got to win the game. Time. Right. Chris is actually up six minutes here. Um, again, this is semifinal. The winner will play the winner of Connor and MHT, which is going on. I, I don't know the status of that. I've been focused on this, but um, any updates from from you, Robbie, or from anyone in the chat would be interesting. Which, like, close that window. Uh, <laughs> I pull it back up. Oh yeah, that's a good counter to Arcona, the Invader Enforcer. Which is probably so, in this deck, right? I mean, you can't build an ISB deck without a Vader. Well, Chris wouldn't build a deck without Vader either, yeah. I don't think. <laughs> and Enforcer probably makes no sense in an ISB. Definitely. Uh, Lord so, Vader doesn't make any sense. Um, the new Vader probably doesn't really make sense. So it's either Enforcer the, or maybe EPP, but probably Enforcer. All right, so we got a barrier against Vengeance. So that... Would turn off Tarkin or Mara Jade adding a battle destiny, but that doesn't matter anyway because of Yoda. Chris grabs the barrier, plays. They're still coming through. Okay, so that is, he is definitely wanting to tango up in space this turn. Cause yeah, and we talked about him putting that there still coming through in his deck. A, so I'm glad I favorite, glad I provided some use to my teammate tonight. That's a Joker King favorite, and I like that card too. Uh, I think that's way more effective. One of my than, favorite cards. It's way more effective than Blast Door Controls. In yeah, terms of, like, it's more high variance, put it that way. Yeah, but it, it also gives you the uh, the uh, the, <laughs> Joe pulls the flexibility to peek at a card and put it back, if nothing else. Yeah, no, it's cool. It, and that, that can be a, a really strong mechanic late game, where you activate everything and your opponent's like, oh, all right, they have nothing in the reserve deck. I can, you know, make some decisions in, in my opponent's control phase, deploy phase based on that. And then you play the circuit still coming through to put a card back in your reserve, and it can, you know, it, it can be uh, impactful. All right, so Yularen comes out, which is going to allow Chris to activate four more. I um, wonder if Chris has another ship or a lot more. He's going to need a lot of power to break through. The uh, He's going to be adding one to his Battle Destiny um, because of Ancient Watering Hole. He's got a Power Destiny, and he's not going to be getting any wild card bonus to total. Because there's no smugglers piloting the wild card currently. Yeah. And there won't and be the, because uh, Joe only has one card left. The Stubbly MHT game has gone on the way we thought. Grindy? This one, would, this one might have gone. Well, it's Rops versus QMC, right, right. and Rops took over Bespin. Connor ends Bespin, okay. QMC's yeah, controlling and got Watering Hole, I think, active, okay. but it's. A grindy game, so... Yeah, Stubby's right. my guy. Rooting for him. Hopefully he gets to the finals. That'd be awesome. 
Um, this Champions League event, obviously, big kudos to Bill Kafer and Sam Tashima for doing a lot of the organization for it. It's yeah. uh, I think it's a good balance of competitive, but also we tried to make it a little casual in some of the input. And that's why these matches are one game because we weren't trying to get it to be a super drawn out as a uh, Chris battles here, no shenanigans in the battle. Um, so Bet Tarkin yeah. will work on the power destiny. Okay. Yeah. Which is alternatives to fighting. Um. And then Chris draws a five. Good destiny. And a tritum is going to reduce the attrition, right? So it's very. This has no immunity. Um, Joe draws a four, which is going to be minus three, right, from Tritum? Yeah, so it'll For be Trish. Oh, no, but then he gets the plus the three. two. Oh, because Maz is there. Maz adds two. Vengeance, ping. Yep. Everything's immune on Joe's side, but I don't think he's going to peel six. So he's probably going to lose yeah, somebody? Like, he's got something to lose. Although Maz Man, is, it's Maz hard. Is it's hard Yoda's to crucial. lose... Anybody on that sh yeah. on those ships, though. I mean, he might lose heart because you know Tarkin's there. So maybe he peels like two and loses heart, and then maybe has an Unita floating around. But I know Joe's not a fan of Unita, but maybe he plays it. He, I know he's vote. It he also Joe's Jedi live it, but he's got a decision here to make. Yeah, Chris has to lose somebody. Right. Probably that Tarl Numpty. It's not even like he's not even <laughs> helping. I mean, this is a classic. ISB numpty, Mr. Sergeant Tall yeah, yeah. right now. He's not adding any power to he's not piloting. He is there to just be ISB body. He's a ISB right. warm body. <laughs> right. He he's a guy that gets bumped with IAO. Yeah. That's all he does. So Chris is thinking here. So alright, so he loses Tritum, which is gonna enable him to draw a card from reserve deck or use pile. It's kinda like the no idea mechanic of when, when guys yeah. get deployed or go lost, they do stuff pretty cool and joe has got to make a decision here of covering six battle damage let's see what he does i can't imagine losing oh, let me, oh he loses oh. yoda so maybe he does have an uni yoda you would think is pretty uh pretty important he's got to have something i mean there's a couple different things oh, oh no i was gonna say like if he had any retrieval going maybe he's got retrieval <coughs> and then he has a ray and he can oh, find yoda again he also couldn't he couldn't lose hark either because uh, then his ancient watering holes. Turn yeah, off. and this is the no aim high. So now, <laughs> does Joe do a, what do you call it? Like after the fact shield pull, <laughs> with the aim yeah. high, or does he just say? I mean, you know, Joe just plays himself into the aim high joke. <laughs> yeah, this way. I mean, it's like his. It's his. Uh, what do you call it? His, his avatar on Slack right now. <laughs> yeah. After oh, the. It, the Mike Kessling game at yeah. the Texas Mini Worlds, where I sat yeah. there going, "He's just not going to pull aim high this whole game against Kessling's ISB retrieving yeah. agents." No, okay, that's I, fine. I just want to say you're welcome to all viewers that if Dan was covering this game, he would be insufferable about the aim high <laughs> angle. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, oh, and it's one of those things that like Joe has to you know decide about because he doesn't probably have that extra shield pulled. He wasted the one. Well, wasted the one on thrown back. And yeah. you know, and don't do that again. He's pulled two shields that are yeah. kind of mediocre now. Yeah, so. it's interesting. I, I like. To, I'm, I'm curious to hear Joe's, because he's also on record to say something along the lines of like shield pullers, but he's not alone. I feel like I don't usually see shield pullers in QMC, but I know his his famous quote was like, "Is the shield puller better than us? You know, your 60th card or your 61st card?" Um, right. Like is that is that fifth? That's what he said. That is the fifth shield, better than a another card that you could play in its place. So that they, you know, the the hot take would be just play your shields better, and you don't have to worry about right. shield pullers. But here we have he's kind of in a crunch because I'm sure if we asked him right now, he's probably like I'm not going to pull aim high because I'm not positive that's the better shield the to shield. pull for the rest of the game. There might be another right. one. It might be ultimatum. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, he's having to make that decision between ultimatum and aim high and. That's rough, like because he pulled. Don't do that again. And he pulled thrown back, and so he's got two shields that don't do anything now on yeah. the table. Yeah. And there's no telling that don't do that again even had any effect on this game, because my points is still there. It pulled. It mm -hmm. already pulled something. It has had. Yeah. So what did that do? That turned off. Not nah, did. Did Chris ever utilize the activation on mobilization? No, he isn't he the deployed whole game. to a docking bay yet. And he didn't use it to, he didn't chuck this for an effect at any point. Right. 
And I don't even know which ones he might have done it for. So all he did was base. So yeah, in effect, it really hasn't done anything. But again, hindsight, 2020. Um, All right, Rio Durant comes out via Maz. So he is a smuggler. smuggler on yeah, yeah, wild. And, you know, Joker King brought up a great point in the chat that, you know, Chris can use I Can't Shake Him to repool that mm-hmm. Palladium back out this turn as well. Yeah. So, yeah, he has two force active. Because yep. if he drew from his use pile when he put him in the lost pile when he forfeited him, he pulled, he drew I Can't Shake Him for Battle Destiny. So then he drew that into his hand, and now he can use that since he retrieved the guy to replay him. So. So, so a few interesting things here. So one, Chris also doesn't have resistance out. And just ate a drain. Well, not that he would satisfy it anyway. Um, but right. but Joe just pushed through five damage. And one of those was Chris tossing sand, coarse and rough and irritating from hand. Even though Yoda is gone. Um, but maybe maybe Chris wants... Chris doesn't want sand out right now, probably, right? Oh, no, he's not getting the Destiny from Tarkin. Or, take, right. time out. He's not getting the added Battle Destiny from Mara Jade. Because Tarkin's right. only with one. But he, that could change with Tritum, as you correctly pointed out. Or Joker King pointed out. So that could change where he would not want sand because he wants to be able to cancel. Right. Um, and then Yularen doesn't add, add or anything like that. So, I, I, I mean, it's also possible maybe Chris has two sands and he's tossing an extra one. That's just such a strong card. I, I've, I, I always hate that card. I hate Justice. I hated Evac Control. It's one of the few things I feel like that JJD and I agree on from a design perspective. I think often I find myself on the opposite side of him. But he uh, he was always anti those cards too. Being on oh, yeah. being on design. I, and I don't like them at all. I yeah. battling and removing characters needs to happen at some point. Those yeah. prolong the game in that sense, and it gets clunky. So I'm glad they got dropped down to two. Mm-hmm. So Kiara comes down. Just another another alien. It'll be interesting to see if Joe ever drops anybody to Shizor's palace. Yeah, that would be presum- presumably like a juicy drain. Of, well, not three, unless it's Chewie or Leia or Dash. Might, probably running D- Dash around RV is a pretty good card right now. Well, if it's yeah, C- CCT yeah, I mean, Shadow if it's Black Sun. Yeah. Well, and uh, you know, if he drops Leia there. Or, I guess Chewy, I guess it would have to be for the alien part. All right, so we got Lee Sub and Kira, two ability for aliens. Yep. Chris or Joe is going wide on Cloud City here. Right. And Chris is going to play Shake as we anticipated. Yep. Probably tried him. Aboard so. the Mara Jade in VT49 Decimator. Yep. And so he gets to draw a card. You know, when Chris was telling me he would just scoop against QMC, I think he's putting up a better fight than he imagined originally. So, although this is about to get out of hand. There's so. Ray. Yeah, so Joe's going just... super wide here. So he's on seven battlegrounds. Right. And. Yeah, it seems like... I mean, so Chris didn't even initiate battle against Arcona when he had a chance, right? So right. that means he probably doesn't have any, ans- well, any counter to it. He needed to save the two force to get Junk Boy back out, so... Mm-hmm. What did you call him Junk force. Boy? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't remember what his name was, so I, I just... Teridium to lit- to or whatever. I don't know. What's the term they use in baseball? He's, just, he's a jag, he's just a guy. All right, yeah. so now Joe so, drops the sand card. Which makes sense if he forfeited Yoda, so. Yeah, okay. And he's got alter. Oh, double alter. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I guess he's going to hang in space for a while. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Yeah, think so he could probably just it. bite the bullet on one turn, and then he's got, oh, boy. Yeah, Chris probably isn't feeling too hot right now. No, nah, I think I was about to say, I think Chris is looking at uh, scooping, but he's probably going to play it out for stream entertainment purposes, which yeah, they're, we they're appreciate. At, they're both at right around 30, if I'm doing my math right. Yeah, um, but in terms of hand and Joe life, being at, but Joe's Joe got being at seven battlegrounds, a little bit rough. <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe's got way better board state right now, and he's got a uh, wider hand. He's got the ability to 
pull a card he needs. He's moving away. He's just seeding Bespin. Okay, yeah, and he's got <clears throat> Ancient Watering Hole online with, what do we say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven species on table? One, two, three, Across four, five, five. Six, seven, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because Maz and Ray aren't doing anything for Watering Hole purposes. Um, right. But it's going to be really hard for Chris to turn off Watering Hole. And obviously right. it's going to be really it, hard. He's not getting any benefit have... from the seven side of ISB because all of Joe's big drains that he's threatening are on, are on Bestman. Right. Right. And he's got aliens at all of them. So. Yeah. So Joe has got a lot of damage queued up next turn. This, and it's all his drains, not even just where he has the alien. This, this yeah, card's yeah. fun. I like seeing this card in like unique or different, you know, I've seen it. I think Garrett was playing in like EBO. You know, obviously you'll see it in agents in the court. You'll see it in QMC. Um, Let's see, so five different, so all your four strains are plus one. So Joe loses cow foul and skate pot combo off the top. Um, and he's starting to turn let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, wow. Um, so I mean, best yeah, case scenario, is, and Joe can't, well, no, sorry, you mix up the players. Um, so Chris can move Mara to Karita. Right? right, this is hyperspeed five. He could move in front and block that too. Um, the, his ground forces on Cloud City are not ideal. I mean, he could, and if he battles the Arcona, then it could give Joe an extra yeah. train of one. Right, right. But he could then move his guys over and block a train of two. Right, at uh, the guest quarters. Yeah. So that's spend a force, spend three more force. To have a net one, you know, four saved. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, yeah. Chris I mean, is kind of in a rock and hard place here. Right. In between a rock and hard place. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ISB is rough against it if you don't have, you know, options. Jeez. And... You know what's wild is that this is a turn. That, that was only Joe's turn four that he really yeah. completely, like, settled all family business, so to speak. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Chris's guys do deploy minus one to Bespin, so he has some options to make some ground up. And mm -hmm. it's not like Joe's ground forces anywhere are all that threatening, other than what the, that the upper walkway really, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like Chris can't go and just drop random scrubs in front of stuff. Or move guys around and block drains, but yeah. Vandalay, Vandalay Industries. He's gonna take Wolf back to hand, I guess. You're going to drop him again and get or the extra no, he, four? He, dropped, he took Teridium back to hand. He could draw a card. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, Joker King. Try to get Seinfeld sure. references and the office references wherever I can. So, turn five. Chris is up around, looks like around six minutes in time. Probably not going to be a factor. Gideon yeah, comes out to the upper walkway. Now you can download a trooper. Yep. He, I think he verified earlier this turn, so he knows that there's one in there. Yeah. He verified with Shizor's but I'm surprised not to see any other Shizor's palace sites. One, two, three, four, five. Look, Chris has to have a six or seventh location, I wonder. Has it just been floating around, or has he been holding it? The uh, the West Gallery is Joe's, yeah. Yeah, the upper walkway was what Chris played. So. All right, so... So he can deploy an E-Web Blaster? I'm, I'm presuming that means he can deploy uh, Narthrax, right? 
the EPP Narthex. You know what I'm talking about? That one uh, snow trooper? Yeah. So I would think maybe someone on rules or um, proofing could let me know. Or Imperial Storm. Has he always been like that or has that been nerfed? It's always been Imperial Stormtrooper? Yeah, for minus two. It used to be free, right? Anywhere. Yeah, it used to be free. Free anywhere, and now it's just minus two. Here. I think it's right. here, yeah. Alright, so... Joe plays a barrier, spending the three-fourths for it on the garrison. Yep. That's just a lot of power, but he does have the sand, so... Well, and it also blocks a juicy drain, too, so... Yeah. But now Chris is going to have to play, pay two in maintenance at the end of his turn. Oh, thank you, Scomp Link slash Greg Zen. Um, yeah, that, that's a big plug for Scomp. S-C-O-M-P dot Star Wars CCG dot org. That's my go-to for cards <laughs> and what they do <laughs> and searching for stuff and searching for images. Um, and it has lots of cool rules, uh, rule specific rules, uh, Rules, rulings, <laughs> uh, rulings for cards. It's a, uh, it's a great resource. It is. Right, so try to. I will be using down. that in two weeks. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big thank you for helping out with San Diego. Looking, uh, <laughs> that's that should be a real fun time. I, I wish things came together a little more for me that I could go to San Diego in January, and um, but not not this year. Um, yeah. But yeah. Well, and I'm thankful. I, it's. I get to go to that because I don't know if I'll get to go to nationals because the Minnesota plane tickets, for whatever reason, never hmm. drop below 300. Yeah, it's a weird, uh, weird environment. Don't fly Southwest anytime soon. Oh, I'm not. I'm actually <laughs> flying Spirit, which is somehow better than Southwest yeah. at the moment. Yeah, and you were mentioning that. It's really not, it's a, what, a two-hour flight? from? Uh... It's actually, I'm, dry, I'm flying to Vegas first and then to San Diego, oh, yeah, so, nice. which is not a terrible layover place yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, he lands Mara Jade. He doesn't move over. Interesting. Yeah, so he deployed Tritum. Lands Mara Jade. Tarkin and Tarl both get out. So what's Chris's plan the rest of the game here? So he's starting during a two. He's about to eat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a lot. Um, yeah. He, he gets did one cover back. up, so he's not as getting blown out by not having resistance. So, still no aim high. <laughs> or yeah. let me rephrase that: still no fourth shield from Joe. I mean, so what is his calculus here? Is he debating between aim high and ultimatum, or something I think else? He's still, I mean, he's got to be holding out for ultimatum. Yeah, like is he like at some point if if Chris sets up a drain three or four, he wants to be able to save that force. Whereas I guess so because he doesn't have the celebration ever going to probably go this game. The other thing is, he, yeah, there's been some instances here where it's like uh, Chris probably has the force to pay for it, but at the same time, every force can can matter, and now he's going to have to pay right. the two for garrison, for maintenance. Yep. And again, there's there's still right around even, um, hand in yeah. life, but. But Joe's got the better board yeah. position at the moment. Although Chris has a lot of battles lined up, so Joe's going to have to adjust this turn. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh, man. I am very worried about a 13 and a half point line tomorrow for the Eagles. And it's just, it's just the last two weeks. I haven't been going good, Joker King. And it, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. 4 30 tomorrow. Go, Birds. All right, so Joe's going to grab a card out of uh, 16 potential choices here. Which is, this is what I always find interesting. I don't know if there's anything Joe can grab that's going to make a difference for his draining purpose. So for me, I like to drain first to see what they lose. So that gives me extra information on what card I will pull during my turn. Now, Joe may already have a plan on what he wants, but, you know, I've always been a big factor or a proponent of getting... Uh, yeah. more information before I make my decisions. I, I definitely think that's the case when the life force gets really low because then like when there's really tough decisions of like how much force are they saving, how much force do they have in their reserve deck. I think at this point... It, it probably can, doesn't matter, yeah. but it's, a, it's one of those habits I like to stay in just because it, it does have a chance to matter. Yeah. And 
like I said, I don't think there's anything Joe's going to pull here that's going to make a difference before he drains anyway. Yeah, like so. he wouldn't pull a path and play it. You're tossing a lost right. inner up just to add a drain of one when there's no celebration set up. Uh, right. So we wouldn't do that. Um, totally hear you there. The, um, I wasn't going to say about, look, oh, he intentionally left only two, so he, he can't Maz successfully, right? Unless he did that at the very beginning, which, no, he didn't. So he I, not Maz. I wonder, yet, but... so, like, for a reason, he didn't open himself up to grabbing an alien. Maybe he knew them were there, or, he, you know, whatever. Oh, Maybe he wants to use all that force in his force pile this turn, um, or, or optimize that force, put it that way. Yeah. Dropping another alien might not move the needle for him right now. Um, as Chris loses. Uh, still coming through from reserve deck. And Chris Burn played... The, the soap. Oh, he just cycled the shake. Obviously, he didn't play that to deploy somebody. All right, draining no, to yeah. a Karita. Because he's going to lose it for the drain, so... Yeah. Second Gideon. Oh, excuse me. We should do a token, Robbie. Let's do a token. We're, the token, the sticker book token program is going to extend through the Champions League final, at which point that will be the end. And uh, we will add up everything. That's what Dan's been uh, the scorekeeper of. And then I should be getting those packs from Kevin very soon that then I can start the process of shipping them out. So um, I'll pick a card in just a moment here. So Chris loses Trooper Salt from hand, Blockade Flagship Bridge from use pile. So that was another location he had floating around here. Dobreed combo, which would have been helpful against the Arcona. At the same time, Chris knows that Joe has a Hujik, so I mean, right. make him use it, make him burn it, but that probably would have been something that Chris would have liked to have in his hand. Uh, Callus goes out. And we get a verify on the reserve deck from Joe. How about, um, how about thrown back Robbie as our, our token here? Thrown back sure. V, I guess it technically is. Yeah. But send that to the... I'll type it in the chat. Sticker. Book. Token. Thrown. I like that picture anyway. Yeah, it's really cool how it blends with the um, the C slip, which I don't say very often. Thrown back yeah. V. All theater at support. All right, so... Joe's in his deploy phase here. It's, God, it's only turn five. We've been going for uh, close to an hour. Yep. It's a long turn. Long. Yeah, I mean, QMC is a grindy deck. And, yeah. you know, as much as I like the deck, every time somebody suggests playing it, I'm like, man, four games of QMC where it, it really does feel like you're playing from behind from the beginning is yeah. just going to grind you down at the end of an event. But I think it's great for something like this. Yeah. I, I'm sure Joe would be say something along the lines of, like, QMC is really good, really fun. It, it presents a lot of decisions. Every Which which the keeping... Ooh, Master Luke is Master showing Luke. up. But, yeah, I'm sure he likes that part of it. Likes the decision-making, the strategy, the lines. Yeah. Dictating the lines based on how the game's going. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that's the one of the... the Beerick back, Tyler needs to <laughs> know that feeling. Um, Thank God I do not. Yeah. So, yeah, so Master Luke would come down here and basic make it so that Dark Total Battle Destiny is zero. There are no characters here with ability greater than four. Right. Man, that should probably be, like, something to do with aliens specifically. Like, while at a site, unless opponent's non-alien character, that, probably wouldn't, that wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit. No. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's one of those things where you got to make almost all loops somewhat stupid just to get them to see play. It seems like. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's a valid concern from design of we don't want to just make cards that are just always going to be inferior to other persona. Um, right. So. Although. I mean, technically, is Mara Jade there? She provides ability five. She is not a character, though, right? She's a character. a character. She doesn't say character card. <laughs> no, this is. I'm positive. This is. Uh, 
this is not a character of ability greater than three. Another one of our remastered cards that looks really good and crisp. And obviously everything I think since, gosh, probably since like set 15 or 16 oh, actually, this has been the remastered style. Now. The remastered Ray looks a lot better than the original Ray. Yeah, with the, what do that. they call it? The Starburst or something? Or yeah. This, like, well, the other one just, I, I don't want to ever badmouth our graphics team, but man, the other one was, it was not my favorite card. The this one besides before it got remastered, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I like the AI a lot. The one that's on the deck boxes. Um, yeah, I, I do too. I've got my AI signed by Tom Hay because that yeah. was the world he won. So. I like I the AI Ray all the Jedi more than the regular Ray all the Jedi. I got that actually. I got yeah. that from Chris Kelly. He traded it to me. Nice. My uh, from Reflections Four. All right, so we have a battle here initiated by Joe. Joe's gonna grab a card off sand. One of the two alternatives to fighting. Even though there are that way, he'll actually get a battle destiny because otherwise Tarkin would have canceled. This it, is kind so. of funny. There's eight noun cards here, and their total power is 17, which is yeah. very low. <laughs> it's, it's barely an average of what two. Yeah. Um, well, two of them are ships. So right, don't add right, any right. Power and then you got a power of two Lisa. And all right, power so Tarkin like bounty one trooper peak. or two trooper. No, no deck does that more than Diplo. I, I swear I've seen like eight cards at a system location in Diplo. That's like a power seven. <laughs> it's like nuts. There's so many like pilots and um, they right. don't add power and like uh, probably Bright Hope and like it's just all these like super low power cards. It's funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the like no, the updated like Ray no is actually. Like no idea has a lot of that too. Yeah. You know, just. Well, I think yeah. I mean, no, no idea has gone they through have so some many guys, rounds. But... I feel like that's its strength, or used to be its strength, is that no idea it could get a lot of power in space. Um, right. But now it can't, because it can only pull Corvettes and uh, um, Rogue One, right? Yeah. Not that it could pull Han Chubby Falcon before, but it, um, you know, like a Profundity would be nice, some nice power. Um, right. Yeah. All right. So, Cloud City Celebration drawn by Joe. Plus one because watering hole is on. Chris draws a two. Reduced to zero because of Master Luke. Yep. Chris owes six in battle damage and two in attrition. So he's got to lose. Yeah. He loses Paul, which allows him to draw, which allows him to draw Barrack from his use pile if he wants. Draws from reserve deck. Some okay. Reserve deck. All right. Let's see. Does Joe get initiate in any other battles? Probably going to run away at the upper walkway, but. No, Maybe not. So. But, I mean, he's not. It's not like he's. I don't think he's threatened to like lose the game there. But yeah, yeah. But, yeah Chris has been looking for that Vader. I'm sure. Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously that'd be good to have. You can get rid of that Arcona. Um. Joe would just play a Hujix, but at the same time, he'd get rid of him at least. Well, but. Um. <laughs> yeah, you know, he could also attack like Kiara or something with the Vader two battle for free and get rid of him. So yeah, yeah, just stuff like that that he could do. But yeah, so he said the card he needed the first turn was the last card he drew. So that was why he drew up to sixteen, which is what yeah. I said. I figured he probably did because. But what do we think that card was? That was that the Vader? No, it wasn't the Vader at that point. I already didn't know Arcona was coming out. No, it the was card I needed. honestly either. I bet it was the Mara Jade, to be honest. Huh. The ship? Okay. The ship. Yeah. All right, so Joe's moves wild card back in front of the Vengeance with just Maz, and I guess he's going to do a bunch of moves here. He's probably going to move over Seer and Hark up. Yeah. Maybe move Luke and Lisa over. To support Din and Yacht. I don't know. <laughs> he's got this. He's got another sand pull, so he's not really too worried about a stormtrooper garrison adding battle dust near it. No, uh, he's got a Hujix in hand too. So, I mean, he's got to always worry about the Hujix with the Arcona, just in case the React got canceled. But mm -hmm. yeah. So again, the winner of this will play the winner of Connor Britton versus Matthew Harrison Trainer, which I'm. It's still going on, is although it? they're playing. Yeah, it's getting a, it's 
Well, and it's getting close because MHT is down to six minutes left, so Ooh. he's going to have to actually start time making out. some. Yeah, time is a constraint of the game. Yep. And on gem, it when it's like a chess clock, a... it's like I've... <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't think... It comes into... I think it comes into less of an issue on Gimp than it does in, in person play, but... You know, in person, it can be factor. way more frustrating because you... You know, it's, it's more frustrating if you're the person who obviously is not using as much of the clock. And right. then... Uh, but there's also a lot more time wasted in IRL play by counting power, remembering all the random little bits of text to try to figure out yeah. bonuses to destiny and power and things like that. So, yeah. And Carl says it was probably Mara that it was he was digging for, which, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure that's the card he was digging for. It's the card that would make most sense for him to need. Yeah. All right. So Joe's just running away with Lee Sub to the corridor. He's going to uh, take off with Hark and Ship to the system, and which should be totally fine. One. Moved Luke over to the walkway. Now he will get a Battle Destiny here, or two, unless Joe pulls the sand card. Uh, Joe will get two because Din adds on with an alien. So that's Yaxkit. Yogurt. 27 to 20, hand in life in favor of Joe. I suspect this will be the last turn. My laptop is at 15% battery, so <laughs> I'll either need to get a charger or <laughs> the game will wrap up. I mean, Chris said he was going to scoop if he can't find Vader, which... Yeah, the math's not good for Chris here, right? One, two, three, four, eh? seven... Yeah, he's not, he's just not being. He's only Chris is only getting through. A he's couple not of doing much damage, and Joe might end up being able to get celebration going now. It could just be like a cat and mouse game. Yeah. And then yeah, if celebration comes out, I. I wonder if this is like if Chris is even running the masterful move combo. We haven't seen it yet, right? Like, the approach is probably with this ISB deck is you just bum rush Bestman, you don't avoid it and and bank on the masterful move combo, right? Saving your right. bacon, so to speak. Well, and I also wonder if Chris should have played the Caridia too. I mean, he might have been better off just tossing it and just yeah. stacking Bespin. Yeah, that's a not giving interesting Joe decision. A place to run. So. Yeah, that comes out a lot. Like when to when to hold back your system. Um. Because yeah, Q, QMC just wants it, it. It really can't afford to pay to drain, even if the yeah. drains are two. It just needs to do a lot um, and save right. a lot. Um, so, that, so if it if it can't satisfy battle plan, that's it. but yeah, obviously it wasn't pulled this game because both players had it satisfied before it even made sense to do it. Well, it was pulled and then it was reverted. Oh yeah, that's right. You that. <laughs> what, Joe, Joe, pulled it, Joe right? definitely pulled battle plan. <laughs> yeah, still, still, <laughs> still hasn't pulled aim high, yeah, but he pulled battle wild. plan. Yeah. Um, That's a rules question. If you're a new player, you can... I think even on jump, you can. You could look through your shields at any time. Mm -hmm. And you don't, have to, you don't have to play it. You can just take a look through it. And, like, on jump, you can do it and then cancel it. I think if you yeah. play, like, Cold Feet V or Hammer Baby V, it does... Yeah. I don't think you can get out of it <laughs> without a reverb. Yeah, yeah you, can, you have to play a shield at that point. Yeah. But usually in IRL play and even Gimp play, if you, if you play something and then the next action is to take it back it usually is okay yeah shield play is important um oh there's oh, a there's Vader. the ai all right so such a he, beautiful card he can cancel din's game text i guess ability yeah yeah um so then it's only a it's two versus one but and you wonder how long chris has been holding that blizzard for oversight Incinerator, interesting card. You don't see that much. Light side incinerator. Uh, retrieving droids. I haven't seen any droids that he's played. So it's a 1-1 one, one that's zero liability. <laughs> Even that helps you. Just another location. Yeah. I mean, it's another location to drain at, but... Oh. Uh, I feel like this is an underlying card for like four different... <laughs> and by four, I mean it's probably like two. Um, incinerator. Yeah, the Dark Incinerator is kind of a pain, or was a pain, with Silence's Golden B and Force yeah. Servitude and the BB-8, or BB-9E before the Errata. 
Um, right. But yeah, so Joe is playing one, two, three, four, five, six light sides, uh, class three sides. You know, you don't see that very often. Then it, I mean, his deck must be just to do what he's been doing, which is to spread and drain. I mean, yeah. as quickly as possible. That's and so I wouldn't expect probably many counter beats or anything like that. I would expect like paths and the barriers right. that he's played. Sand. At least two alternatives to fighting. <laughs> right. There's one in the sand. So. Yeah. So again, whoever wins this it. will play Connor MHT. They will have they will play a match in the final. They will submit both decks before they play game one. And uh, and yeah, it'll be match play differential. Um, the, the, the quarterfinals and semifinals have been one game just to, I guess, try to... Or, or I think our reasoning was, let's not make this too involved, but... Uh, right. And also to, a little bit to mirror... <laughs> we thought it was mirroring the Champions League in soccer or football, um, but actually they do the opposite. They have matches yep. in the quarter and semis and maybe in the top 16, and then for the finals they, they just do a one and done. Yeah, they do match play for the whole knockout round until the finals and then it's just a one game which yeah. is weird yeah but the one game is also probably because they play their championship match at a neutral location so yeah. all right so we got a big battle <laughs> well, here chris will do chris something going here, down but... fighting draws yeah. a five and joe draws a two which will be plus be a... one so a total yeah. of three so he's down ten Chris has to lose yeah. something. Probably the Garrison. The trooper to... Garrison. Because otherwise he's got three maintenance guards on the table, which is a little rough. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Good prediction there. Joe can lose. Yeah, Din and... Yeah. Yogurt. Pro... Yeah, Yogurt. And he still has Watering Hole on, right? Taws, Lisa, Arcona, Corellian, Hark. Yeah. Yep, yeah. just enough. Five. Well, he's got... Uh, oh, it's Maz there. I thought he still had that Rio yeah, guy. But... Speciesless Maz. Oh, excuse me. All right, we got Tarkin shuttling up to the Vengeance. Mara Jade takes off. Sergeant Tarl, cousin of Crazy Carl, holding down the platform. Yeah. I mean, he... <laughs> kind of can't do much. There's a QMC late game. It's a lot of math of, like, how much force yeah. do I want in this pile versus that pile? I got to pluck a card. I got to save force for this evasion on my opponent's turn. Like, all this... <laughs> it gets, uh... It gets it's very brainy at the end. Right. Vader disembarks. Yep. But yeah, obviously, obviously, problem here for Chris is he's not forcing a lot of damage. Uh, and he's about to take what two, four, six, seven damage this turn. Yeah. Yeah, and then after which that, is, he's really running low. Which is pretty much half his life force. So. Yeah, and and ISB now doesn't... Joe should pull aim high. Right now. <laughs> yeah. And stop a retrieval. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't. But he does not. He doesn't. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, at this point, the only way, like, that's the only shield that Joe needs. I don't think he needs Yeah, and at that at point, it would have been the difference of actually getting a force back, because then he can't right. pay the maintenance for all these people. Yep. 100%. He would, he, Chris so. would decline there, right? He can't leave. Yeah, he can't four leave dry or, Although the, arc, <laughs> the plucky Arcon over here. Yeah, I mean, he guess he could... Yeah, you could punt yeah. this garrison, but like yeah, for yeah, it, it presents a decision. That's for sure. But this Arcona has literally been staring down fifteen Dude. power for four turns. You don't so. mess with that Arcona. That Arcona is like yeah. <laughs> I bet I bet Chris is really wishing he had firepower right now. Or the Taco Bill card pinned down. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to respond to him and say we have. Yeah. Joe's comment. I'm betting yeah. by now the commentators have mentioned aim high. I decided long ago that I'm probably going to lose on that. Ultimatum might be a factor. Yeah, I think we speculated that at one point, right? That right, and that's and that's what I thought. Like I, I figured he was not going to lose on aim high, but he could lose on ultimatum. But <laughs> now he's not going to lose on 
ultimatum, but he probably he's not going to lose on it. The aim high either, yeah. but at this point, there's no reason I don't think to not. I it. I do think so. I, the fact that this is a one and done, you know, differential doesn't matter. Factors in slightly. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I wonder like if this is a differential. This was game one of two. Might make more sense to pull it. Um, <laughs> that's the Arcona. <laughs> it's so hot right now. <laughs> uh, so good, yeah. good old banter here. All right, as I get yeah. my low battery. All right, all right. Let me um hold down the We're fort, Robbie. It. I'm gonna go get my yeah. charger real quick. But oh, if, I thought you were gonna take us with you on a nice tour of your house uh, while you were going. But <laughs> no, let me uh. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll be right back. Yep. So, all right. Well, Joe's gonna start draining. Um, an update on the MHT Stubbly game. Uh, it is pretty close. Uh, MHT just got a big retrieval in, and he's doing his drains now. So, um, we'll see how much more. I think he's almost done with his drains. So, we'll see where he battles or anything like that. Um, but that game is being played on uh, Dan's stream. So. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's why Chris probably hasn't battled Darkona either, is because Darkona just reacts to a site and starts training, so it's even more of a... Yeah, awful feeling. All right, so we are see. charged. <laughs> We're not going to go dark like the Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, MHT might pull this out or he might lose on time. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Yeah, so Chris I concedes. I figured Chris was going to concede. I mean, he he was in a <laughs> good game with both players. Yeah, I mean, he was in a rough spot, so um, he was having trouble putting some of the pieces together, even though he's drawing like nineteen cards. Yeah. So, yeah. And good. like I said, the first thing you mentioned to me today is if Joe plays QMC, he would probably be in for a tough one. And I said, well, Joe might.